So, what is our agenda for today? So, our agenda today is basically to do these three things introduction, recipe theory, doing a recipe theory demo, and uh, briefly talk about SAP Fury architecture. So that is what our agenda in this session is today. So thank you, everyone. And uh, thank you for joining the class. Now, why Fury and what is the Fury is coming from? So we'll talk about uh, some of these points. So Fury as a concept, as a user interface, has been proposed or introduced or suggested, or recommended by SAP past several years now. So SAP wanted to change and provide a new user interface. So we always have a SAP GUI. But now for the users, SAP also want to provide a new user interface for the business users. Most user still uses SAP through SAP GUI. That is very true. Even today, even today, most people, a lot of people use SAP GUI. Now, in the future also, SAP GUI will remain. SAP Fury is SAP Fury is new user interface for business users. The task, the admin tasks. Admin tasks will still be done using SAP GUI. So, for example, if I'm a, if I'm doing configuration, which basically means SPRO, if I'm doing programming, etc or security work, so all that we still be doing will be done using SAP GUI. That is what this basically means. So Fury is a user interface for business users. But when it comes to the consultants, functional consultant, technical consultant, security consultant, they will still be using SAP GUI. So usage of SAP GUI, as we have been doing all along, will remain. OK, so that is the SAP GUI. Now, the why SAP has been talking about SAP GUI. The idea of SAP GUI, so SAP software can be accessed from mobile and desktop devices. So now what is happening is that a lot more computing happening using smartphones or smart devices, not with SAP, not with the desktop and laptops. Now, desktop and laptops are basically being used and will be used in the future. But if you see the business users, a lot many business users are using SAP mobile phones or smartphones, tablets. So that basically means we need a user interface which can be across the hardware. So SAP GUI developed SAP Fury is developed as user interface which can be used 
which can be used across different hardware. That is one of the very important things, which include a smartphone, which include uh, tablets, which of course include laptops. Yes. Because business users can be accessing SAP from anywhere. Business user can be accessing SAP to any of these devices, from any of these places. So then how do we make sure that business user is able to use SAP through that? Because if you see that uh, uh, current uh, SAP GUI, then SAP GUI can only be used on laptop and desktop. Means you cannot install SAP GUI on a smartphone. You cannot install in most of the tablets. So now that is the problem. So that basically means you need a user interface which business users can use on any hardware. So that's another important point for us to understand. Now, this is how SAP Fury look like. We will be logging into. We'll see that it can be used through desktop, to tablet, to smartphone. So user interface, which is independent of devices. Business and technical changes. So pressure from the business team to mobilize business applications. So which basically means you cannot develop mobile apps. So option would be that okay company should use mobile app if you know if company use mobile app then how many mobile app you can use that's just not possible so that is where sap fury come into the picture now sap fury is a list of applications this list of applications can be used by different employees, managers, sales, purchase, finance, and different other teams. We'll see that. So design with a mobile mindset. Because more and more computing is happening on the mobile devices, whether it's a smartphone, whether it's happening on tablet. So that is the reason SAP to introduce SAP Fury. Design with mobile mindset. Looking at the demo. Okay, so now let's look at the demo. So, first and foremost, how do we log into Fury? So, first and so we know SAP logon. So, this is our SAP logon. And if we click on it, and then similar way, we can log into SAP. So, I'm logging to SAP as Pohana. So, using the uh, SAP logon 760 and I'm logging to SAP S4 HANA. So that is where SAP, um, I put my ID, I put my password, and I can log in into SAP. So now we log into SAP. Now, this is in SAP S4 HANA. So what you're looking at right now is SAP, S4 HANA, all your different modules and logistics, counting HR and all that. Okay. Now, if I wanted to log in to Fury, then you can type in, there's a transaction here. And that transaction is, so there is a transaction and that transaction is called slash and UI to dash FLP. So slash n ui2 slash flt, flp. Okay. So this is the transaction. So if I type that slash n under slash ui2 slash flp2, so you can make a note slash n slash ui2 slash F L P and if I hit enter, it will take me to Fury. Now I the then Fury app opens up. Now based upon my business role, so here 
there is a concept of business role. So business role. This business role is very similar to the concept of this business role we had in security, classical security. So based upon the business role, we will see different So now I'm seeing here different uh, apps and all these different apps appears to me because of my whatever my role which is assigned to me. So based upon whatever role has been assigned to me, I see all these different business role. That is what this basically means. These are all different roles, which I see. Now, another way, if I um, close this, okay. if I close this, now this is, I'm in uh, my browser, and I'm using Google Chrome. And if I click on it, I have also put this as a part of my just like Google or anything you can put into your list. I have put this also as a part of mine. And then directly I come here. So I don't need to log into even SAP. I don't need to log in. So why should I log into SAP, right? So I can log off from SAP. And then directly from here, I put this as my favorites. So this is my, I click on it directly here. And because this is in favorites, so I don't need to log into SAP directly. And what are the transaction I have set it up? I directly appears there. And I click on SAP icon, then I will see all the different applications which is listed to me. Okay. Now, one more thing here is that this is my ID. If I click on it, then I, I, there is a something called setting. In the setting, there are certain things which you can do. So this is basically my name, my email, and all that. In appearance, you can define your appearance, whether you, what kind of appearance you want. So you know, dark contrast and all that. So you can select few options, which I have this. So you can choose other uh, contrast if you wanted to select some different complex so you know i set it up different uh, complex so some of these um, settings so if i want to do it and i want to go to appearance and i want to go back then i can choose so this is i come back to my original so you can choose the different contrasts and display settings now if i go setting here <clears throat> Then you can choose whatever you want. Then there's a display setting you want. Then there's home page. You can decide home page. Then there's a user activities, clear my history, user profile, whatever your user profile. User profile would be set up by the security people. Whatever the user profile you have, you will see and you will have an access to all those profiles based upon your profile. Now, another thing which is important here is you can define your language and English. For me, uh, language is English. Date format, month, date, year. Time format, so you can set it up, all those settings for you. Then there's a default setting. In the default setting, there are a few things which is very important here. And here, I want to set it up that what is my default company code, my business area, my exchange rate, my fiscal year. Um, my currency is working in US dollars, my shipping point, material type, if I want to default my customer, and pair sales organizations, if I wanted to make uh, some sales organization, it's my default. So I can put a default. So let's say I want this sales organization as my default sales organization. Okay. So you can set it up. Here, all your different defaults. So this is important where you can set up the default. 
Now, there's another thing here, uh, which we can see. Um, there is an app finder. If you go to app finder, so in the app finder, based upon your role, you will have access to all different apps. So these are all different applications. Now, I'm seeing only these because whatever authorization has been assigned to me. So mostly related to sales and purchase, inventory, finance, those things I'm seeing because whatever the role has been assigned to me. So these are the different apps here. So there is a master data, material master, some cost accounting, some sales analytics, there's billing, invoice list, incoming. So all these different sales planning, sales overview. If I see that, there is a sales planning. If I click onto this, I want to do something else, supplier governance, I can choose that. And then based upon that, you can add. You see that here? Add tile. Now, where do you want to add it? You can choose, okay, add into my home. So you can select the tile, you can select the app, and then you go here, and then it will be shown to you. So if you go back here, this is your my home, and the my home, these are the different tabs are there. And all the tab which you see on home, you can select from your app finder. These are from the app finder, all these different apps, which is assigned to me, outbound delivery, this, proof of delivery, all those different apps are appearing visible to me. Okay. Now, a couple of more things which I want to talk about. Um, there is something called Fury App Library. Now, if you want to know, what is the complete Fury app ID? So if you go back here, in Google, if you type your SAP Fury library, okay, if you type SAP Fury library, it will open up this page where we say SAP Fury app reference library. Then here you can see SAP Fury app library. If you click on it, So this will take you to welcome to the Fury library. Now here you have all these different app. If you right click here, all S for SAP S for HANA because I'm SAP S for HANA. So I click on the all apps in SAP S for HANA. Now here, if you go back and you want to see by a line of business. So that basically means that if as of now, these are the different apps, close to probably 2,000 apps, yeah? So supply chain, they are 653. Sourcing and purchasing, 550. Service, this much. Sales, uh, 547. Finance, 988. Largest number is in finance, yeah? If, let us say, you want to go to sales or something and you want to see what are those apps are, you can see all these different apps. These are different apps which you can check. These are all different apps which you can go into the system. If you, if you want to see what is there in supply chain, if you want to go to sourcing and procurement, you can see all the apps which is there in sourcing and procurement. If you go back and if you want to see what is there in supply chain, these are the different one in the supply chain production etc we can see in supply chain that is what you see here so these are the list of all different apps which you have in sap system and that is what you can see here in this list and how do you get it again so if you want to know all the apps if you go back back And you can put a Fury library. Okay. When you put a Fury library, you will get to see all these different applications. So you go to SAP Fury, you type your SAP Fury library on your uh, Google Chrome, you get SAP library.hanaondemand.com, and then you right click on it and then you can 
get the list. So we saw the quick demo of uh, different transactions. Now, before I go there, so let us say if I want to do a transaction, right? So let us say I want to do a transaction. So let us say I want to create a sales startup in the Fury. How can I do that? So we click on it. It looks very similar. Yeah. So if we go back, it opens, create sales startup. This is very similar to transaction code VA01. I enter my order type. So I can uh, select order I want. So let's say this is my order type as we normally select, right? Hit enter. I want to select my customer. So I want to select, let us say, my customer. And uh, I have a customer. So for example, this is my customer. So I made a customer for the demo purposes. So this is my customer, and I enter my customer. And select my sales area as we as a system required. Now we are entering a sales order in the Fury. Yeah. Customer reference IMG. Hit enter. And we enter the material. We enter the material. So this is the material. If you go to material. And then we enter the material. Enter the quantity. Continue. It's very similar. If you know how to create a sales order in a VA01, you can create a sales order in the Fury. Now you're creating a sales order in the Fury. And we hit save button. Okay. This is the save button as so if you see the how we are entering the order, sales order. It is entering very much in the the way we enter in any transaction. This is very similar to that. Nothing really different. So enter the sales order. Now we I want to briefly talk about architecture. So in the architecture, if you look at it, so SAP Fury in SAP Mobile Platform. So here we have a you can X. You can uh, access this on desktop, on mobile, on web browser, and everything else. OK? Now, what is the I architecture? It is written in something called HTML5. So it is written in HTML5. Now, what does this basically mean? So I will share one uh, a very uh, document is incomplete. OK, so we complete that. As as it is asked uh, in in uh, missing data, we enter document. We get a message. Document is complete, and we save it. Okay. Then we save it. Now. I go back to a very interesting article. This is a this is on blog.sap.com. And I like this blog a lot, which describes a very well written long back Evan Furnia. And uh, what is SAP Fury from the technical perspective? Right. So I kind of like this um, this article or this blog, I should say. And uh, so I would like to share this with you. So you SAP U, UI5 and SAP Fury. Understand this. An easy way to clarify the difference between the two can be resumed in this way, comparison, and you can build a house. House is the final product. So this is my house. It's a final product. So house is the final product following the architecture best practice SAP Fury application. So SAP Fury is house or application. And the tool and the instrument and the material that you can use to build the house is SAP UI5. So SAP UI5 is your platform, is your toolkit, is the technology 
in which in this toolkit and using this toolkit, we have built a house. We have built the house. So SAP Fury is the new user interface for SAP software. We talked about, we saw that also. And SAP Fury use certain tools. Now SAP Fury is being used something called SAP UI 5. SAP UI 5 is a framework, is a platform that is used to build the SAP Fury application. And SAP UI 5 is a collection of different tools. Now, when we look at the SAP UI 5, so if you look at this box, SAP UI 5 is a collection of tools. And in, in the SAP UI 5, it contains further technology tools. So within the tool, in the toolbox, there are different tools. Within the toolbox, one of the tools is HTML5 and few other things. jQueries. Okay, so jQuery, we see that here. So SAP Fury is an application, and this application is used using a toolkit or platform that is called SAP UI5. And SAP UI5 include HTML5 and other applications. So with that, thank you very much. And uh, that is what I was planning to talk today. Thank you.